For centuries, people have tried to tunnel through nature's obstacles, hand digging, drilling, and blasting their way. But these methods made for dangerous and slow work. Designing a machine that could do the dirty work was something that had engineers stumped for decades. That was until the Robbins family came along. Dick Robbins spent most of his childhood in Alaska, where his father ran a mine. But when the mine went bankrupt during the war, the Robbins family moved to Illinois, where his father started his own tunnel engineering company. In time, he would invent the first successful hard rock tunneling machine. And my dad was an inventor and a visionary. He developed a way of using drag picks to cut grooves in the rock, and then rolling in between these grooves were these disc-shaped cutters that crushed the rock, and that was the major breakthrough. But in 1958, just as the Robbins Company was beginning to enjoy some success, tragedy struck. My father was lost in an airplane accident just a few months after I went to work for him full time. I was 25 years old at that time. Dick came in, I think he was not long out of university, came in to basically wrap up the last delivery and close down this company, which he proceeded to nearly do. Well, there were only two of us for a period of time, uh, back in 1960, 61, before we got another contract that restarted the Robbins Company. Improving upon his father's ideas with his own innovations, Robbins rejuvenated the company. Among other things, he perfected the cutting discs, implemented the use of hydraulics, and invented a system of rapid muck removal. Before long, Robbins had transformed the somewhat simple machines into the first complete, self-contained tunneling systems. Today's machines can be more than 50 feet in diameter and cut through rock at speeds of 15 feet per hour. Once he'd figured out how to tunnel through hard rock, Robbins turned his attention to building machines that could handle any rock. Hard rock is one of the simplest environments in which to tunnel. But most rock is quite variable. It's common, even in a hard rock tunnel, to go from good, solid, self-supporting material into what amounts to soil, sands and gravel. One of my inventions was to develop a system of precast concrete segments which line the tunnel as you go. The machine may be boring in very treacherous caving rock, but it's being supported as the machine produces the tunnel. He's an engineer's engineer, and he's always thinking uh, where they can come up with some new way to, to solve some old problem. Even the Channel Tunnel connecting England and France wasn't too big for Robbins to tackle. In 1957, my father was asked to consult with the French on building a machine for the tunnel. Some years after my father died, we built five tunneling machines for that job and worked on it from both the British and the French sides, and we were delighted to have been involved in that project from the very beginning all the way through to the end. Robbins tunnel boring machines now hold 90% out of dozens of the world's high-speed tunneling records. And today, the earth-eating giants are hard at work in projects all around the world. Well, I've enjoyed being an inventor and a, a developer of uh, new pieces of machinery and concepts and systems. And uh, I think uh, my dad would be very proud. The 2009 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Engineering is presented to Richard Robbins for his imagination and skill in developing a hard rock tunnel boring machine and its associated systems, resulting in a safe, economical, and efficient method for constructing tunnels.